Hi everyone, this is Alf Ali. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing okay. So today I'm doing a vod- uh, Start again. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Alf Ali. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing okay. So today I'm doing a vod view. This is for Hudson. Now the last time we did a Hudson vod view, I believe that we were on Numbani. It was a bit ago, so I'm trying to like, remember this from my head. We were on Numbani and we're talking about uh, panicking a lot and about how we were jumping around like really, really like panically and stuff. We had some amazing decision making at some points and other points where we were just like panicking like mad basically. Um, So we've got this vod review today. I think it's a couple months after the last one. So we're going to see how much of an improvement we have made. We are still in GM. Obviously can't really climb too much more except for like top 500. <laughs> and it is on PlayStation. Basically they put to me my overall worries of what I think are struggling with are uh, I stopped kind of jumping a lot and kind of calmed down which is really really great but now I either feel like I still get really panicky or I just jump and still make bad decisions due to panicking or my overall gameplay just feels super super slow because I'm so used to rapidly jumping and being all over the place and now I'm just kind of stationary okay I'm gonna start with this first bit before I carry on you will feel like that because um like I'll just kind of like show it in the this kind of replay thing you're so used to just pressing jump all the time to like boing 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 right but now you're just you're now used to like just playing like this okay my first bit of advice I can give to you by the way if you feel like you're just stood around kind of doing nothing sometimes be like either wiggling your um right stick like this just constantly like what's it called looking about because that will help with it or the second thing is i've got my crouch on my right stick as well so i can be like crouching as well this basically means that my thumb is constantly on my right stick you know and i could just be, like crouch spamming as well because if so the issue with jumping in case people don't know is if you jump like this it's very very regular compared to like if you crouch you could hold crouch for longer and then you could like let go of it you know it's very kind of like you, you can basically kind of play about a little bit more with crouch and definitely outbeat people compared to jump where you can't actually cancel a jump but you just end up like jumping like this okay so if you feel like you do feel like a little bit stationary or you know you feel like you have to be doing stuff as well i think definitely like start pressing the crouch button if you see me play my like play as i do a lot of the times i will spend myself like <laughs> pressing the crouch button and stuff like that because i what's it called i just need something to do and the second thing is, also as when viewing my, my replays, uh, I look at my DPS and it's like I'm never pocketing to them when, I sh uh, when they're shooting at people. And the second they lose um, L line of sight of the enemy, that's when I start damage boosting. So I don't get too much value. But in this replay, I feel as though I had some good damage boosting when they had good line of sight. Uh, not, um, not sure what the deal was different about this match, but I definitely feel like my playstyle fit a lot with my teammates. Okay, so second big Hudson is I feel as though we might be struggling a bit with timings and kind of being preemptive of what the team's going to be. But I guess we'll kind of look into it in just a second. But by the way, as well, guys, you can get your brand, like your own kind of like VOD views, basically. They have 5,000 channel points. I do them on my Twitch on Mondays, but also stream on Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays too. They are completely for free. All you have to do is literally earn the channel points, which you do by just watching the streams. You can come and say hello to my lovely community or you can come and lurk. It is completely whatever you feel like is best for you personally. We have Owl Guardian on, by the way. I've not and our guardian involved in a quite a long while so it's gonna be really really nice just to see and yeah i guess we'll get into it we have a really really good damage boost for comp just my first thing here is i would definitely be speeding out of spawn what you could do is if you manage to comp this with your jungle queen you can um speed people out of spawn and then the jungle queen can shout so you get two lots of um speed boost i do this a lot when i play with zelda just on tank but it's nice first issue here is you never ever just want to walk out of where you are right now i've already seen this um the reason is because Yes, your soldiers ahead, but walk out this side instead if you can. The reason is because you walking out of this side, obviously all the, the team are here, and you'll see a lot of the team, what's it called? A lot of the team like coming out and fighting here. It's like the main kind of like fighting point is um just around like this area basically. So my main thing is definitely do not be peeking this this window straight away. Be sure that we're going round the side, alright? But keep going. It's a nice bit of damage boost here. Just, I just, just try to kind of position yourself, yeah, like like how you are now. So up some hacks you. Love how you just quickly hop around the wall. Nice heals on the Junk Queen. Nice. Nice flick on the bat. We don't need to flick up there though. We could definitely stay a little bit lower. Nice heals on the Junk Queen. Push the damage boost a bit more. Okay, feels like we're getting a little bit lost here. Let's go back. And it feels all, so okay, this is fine because obviously you don't realize this is a sombra yet. So we just position ourselves nicely. I feel so we could have definitely whipped ourselves back into the into this room instead of like because what happens is you end up like oh I'm gonna stand here because the sombra's here. As soon as your soldier starts contesting the sombra, you go out because what can happen is obviously this sombra now she can't properly translocate away due to the um, the sombra rework. What you want to do now is you want to be GM to the soldier here and damage boost him. 
so because obviously the sober doesn't really have two like far to go now because of the translocator um like rework and stuff like that so she can't really go anywhere it makes it so so easy if sombra makes a bad hack or a bad uncloak to be able to get picked off so this is completely fine you hiding from the sombra but then you have to think to yourself okay how can we be effective and that would be going to go and damage with our soldier right now to get this pick off on the sombra if, if you didn't even want to get the pick off, by the way, you should have definitely, like, moved into the room anyways as well. Because as soon as that summer is being contested, she's not going to go for you. And you're still, like, quite full HP as well because you obviously are about to manage to help you out. I would whip into this room a little bit quicker. But we keep going. Damage booster, Joker Queen here, like, because she's half HP. Okay, it's this, this GA, okay? Yes, they don't really have anyone to be able to, um... To shoot you down, obviously, apart from the honor. They don't really have anyone, but still, we don't need to be filling ourselves up in the air right now. You could just stay on the ground and just damage boost this bat right now, and then just keep on playing with your Joker Queen. Maybe use your GA to get back into this room or something like that, because once again, we're still playing very, like, out in the open. But we'll keep going. So we don't have our back into the room, which is completely fine. Damage boost the axe swing. We, uh, remember, like, she's, she is critical, don't get me wrong, but remember, Joker Queen has, like, so much HP, like, she has, like, 400, plus you still have your bat that's here as well. All you have to do is just, like, quick flick onto the damage boost when you see a pull out her axe can do a lot of damage and also she gets health steal from it as well so she can actually get her health back a lot quicker and when damage boosting it obviously she gets more health as well keep going okay it's this bit okay you i feel so you kind of like panic now because you realize that you're in a bad spot okay so did you see this reaper you want to back off i would instead of you because you end up um doing like a little backwards gear or something in a sec okay think to yourself how can we use this 1.5 second cooldown effectively because if we try to ga into the the junk queen and then get out we have two issues the first one is we're getting closer to this reaper remember reaper is really really like good up close so we want to try and create distance from him the second thing as well doing a forward and back slingshot or a forward and back backwards ga is actually going to increase our ga cooldown to like 2.5 seconds compared to if we because you were kind of like here ish right we could just look at our bap ga buddy hop bam 1.5 seconds try if you can to look out for any opportunity that you can use to just do a 1.5 second ga yes okay it's not as fun as doing like the you know little slingshots and stuff like that but it will definitely help save your ga cooldown so you're like about here instead of like just panicking bing okay so we'll keep going we know obviously fling ourselves out to our soldier is completely fine playing our cover which is also fine nice damage boost soldier here you could definitely damage boost a tiny bit more though but it's all right and nice so we push up a little bit love your use of cover right now we don't need to focus on healing junk queen up there just honestly just keep on focusing and um, damage boost onto your soldier you can let your bat heal it plus remember as well window is so much better than mercy's valk nice damage boost there that was a lot better i'd start backing off a little bit now yeah can you hear them now how they're starting to get a little bit a little bit closer and stuff like that as soon as you're able to hear them like about to enter this place you need to be backing off a little bit quicker nice ping I've been playing a lot like further away from the window, by the way. Nice. Make that a fling behind the barrel though, once again, just in case of LOS. Nice. Damage boost now. Nice. Love that damage boost on the axe. Really, really good. That is such better damage boost there. Nice damage boost as well into the bat. No, no, no. Okay, nice. We did manage to recover it really well, okay, but we did not need to do this, okay? Let's quickly go back. Basically, we don't really want to kind of. Cause so with, with Sombra in season seven now, I found the less that she's focusing someone, I just don't touch her. Like it's very much kind of very similar to season six, but I know that if she's translocating away and needs help, then I could definitely help her out some more. Okay. So you see our Sombra right now, we can tell through the walls that she's not really doing anything. Like she's very much kind of like just vibing about like, dum -dum -dum, you know, she's doing her own thing. She can go over to health pack. She could just vibe. Okay. She's not being detected. The reason why you, you know that she's not being detected is you can't hear this Reaper shooting. Cause obviously you, you end up kind of seeing the Reaper in like just a second, right? You know that the Sombra is not really doing like, you know, the Sombra's fine. So unless this Sombra comes to you, you don't want to be peeking out here because you don't know who's going to be using this flank angle like example so i would wait for the sombra to come into the room before you start helping out if not i would just honestly just stay main and just damage with some of these guys okay because i feel as though this ends up a revealing your sombra but also b putting you in like a really really bad spot which you'll see in a second very very nice hack from your sombra though definitely but we should have definitely like we should have definitely like not gone with her this is a five out though especially to follow up on the junk queen all i feel as though this is fine Nice push on damage boost for all this. Really, really nice. 
very very nice love as well how you obviously you leave in the healing for your your bath and everything as well really really nice i'd play a little bit further back here like more behind the barrel because we're still a little bit open right now or we could definitely like rotate a tiny bit more maybe like down the stairs you know like like literally just down here the reason is because you right now especially if like they just decide just to rush main or someone peaks main you're in a very vulnerable spot like because they're, they're gonna come out of here right mercy whereas if you were position yourself down here or like even like back here or something gives you so much better cover and then also gives you escape routes to get back to your team okay so we just need to kind of amend that tiny bit of position in here did you end up capping it though, which is really, really great? Unfortunately, I cannot see where the next point is due to the replay viewer. But I'm guessing it's where your team's going to be going, which is completely fine. Love how obviously all your team is grouped up with all that and everything. Um, are we going into one like the little bridge? Yeah, we're on the little bridge one. Nice. Love how you like reposition yourself early using this cover. Nice. I'd make that a, a G Council bunny hop here. The reason is because on the just in case, say the Sombra, well, they don't have Sombra anymore, but let, let's say Tracer just randomly disappears for you and stuff like that, you have a GA, you know, ready. Essentially, you want to try and avoid using slingshots if you can get a buddy hop, on, buddy, a buddy hop off instead. It'll be so much easier for you. It'll, like, cool down everything. But we keep going. Nice positioning here. Love how you're constantly checking these flank angles and stuff. Really nice. Okay. Very, very nice. So you know they're main now. I would not be pushing up as far as you are though. Remember this Junker Queen's still here. She could definitely still hit a knife on you. Just honestly, you don't really need to move from here. You could very much just stand back, okay? You know, actually, you know that they're all coming from main. So you do not need to be kind of, what's it called? You do not need to be like worried about this flank angle right now. So you could honestly just stand here with your back to her. Oh, let's go and help Bap. Okay, we could do a quick like GA in and out. But we could honestly, we could just stand here. Like there is no need for you to be pushed up as much as you are right now. Nice heals. Nice. Oh, we should have damage missed that helix rocket. We needed to be on that damage missile time a bit quicker. We decided to go to point because obviously we've lost um soldier. Ooh, nice. We used it to rotate actually. I thought you were gonna go for the res there and I'd be like, no. Nice damage boost there. A lot better. I'd push forward with Jungle Queen here. The reasoning is because your Jungle Queen is looking for this pick off on the Tracer or like to challenge the Tracer right now. And all it takes is for you just to do a straight GA to your Jungle Queen and kind of like just play here for a second to try and help damage boost. And then obviously if we force Tracer recall, she starts backing off. You know where your soldier's going to be and it's just another one's getting straight GA and then just a bunny hop around the um the pillar. Just to get in that extra like little bit of damage boost. Because I feel as though we could definitely help out the, the Jungle Queen a bit more. She's wanted to be aggressive. Nice. See how we're doing it now? Lovely. I just want you to, you to do basically what you just did then, but earlier. Okay. And they're kind of rotating in. Soldier ends up backing off, so it's completely fine. Love how you end up using the Junker Queen to get out. Nice. Okay, so you... I feel as though you can kind of hear them coming from this angle now. Once again, we need to be backed off from this angle a little bit like earlier, I feel like, because once again, we're still very kind of pushed up and aggressive with them. I'd be looking to maybe do some Angelic Descents kind of like down here or, or just something just so once again we're not kind of a real risk stay pushed up your junk queen remember that so obviously bap is here to help your soldier but it's, does soldier have like a better angle right now no not really junk queen though junk queen is once is getting really really aggressive with these guys i kind of like brawled a little bit so what I would do here is I would honestly stick it out with Junk Queen, okay? You cannot help these guys until the Anstead wears off. Remember, it takes four seconds for the Anstead to wear off. And if we looked as, as well before the before before the Anstead was applied, they're not very, very weak at all. They are completely fine. There was nobody to contest the main as well because they have a lot of short-range heroes. So they don't have like a soldier or like an Ash or something to pick them off from main. These guys are completely fine as they are. So commit to with your Junk Queen right now. Go in, damage boost her, let her brawl it out. And then if she shouts out, that's when you can then rotate back to your team, all right? I want you to be a little bit more aggressive in that scenario. Same thing as well. We can play the damage boost one a little bit more. Bad before she gets stuck. Love your kind of like how far you're playing back. Nice. I just, I, ooh, okay. We res. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't really like the res. Drew Queen is gonna get like a few picks though, which is good.
Okay, let's let's quickly rewind this before I talk about the health pack. Because <laughs> Spirit of Animals, well, there, there was like a slight health pack that we could have definitely gone to, okay? Right now, okay, this is fine. You wasted all this out, okay? Think to yourself, how many people are alive right now and can we win this team fight? No. Because, like, you've still got what's called. The enemy team has still got four people alive. And they've only, like, obviously knocked down their honor. And right now, it is just you. It is great that you survived all this, don't get me wrong. But I would definitely instead be kind of, like, using my movements and, like, these orbs and stuff to stall this out maybe as long as we can. Because right now, you rezzing the jungle queen is all well and good. But now it's a 2v4. And it's what's it called. I feel as though we're definitely not going to win this. Okay. I feel as though this is very much a resin to nothing. I like this damage boost though, to try to help. Nice. That's obviously you know, clicking ourselves away. We realize the trace is on us, which is completely fine. We should have definitely um, gone to the health pack, made this uh, like t thing like a little bit tighter to get to the health pack. But at the same time, I think as soon as you get to the health pack, you're not going to be able to contest this tracer, especially because the tracer's got um, armor as well, from still from the brig rally. You're not going to win this 1v1 either. So. I think it's completely fine, but I think we definitely rezzed our Jungle Queen into a lost buy, okay? So try to kind of look at the um, kill feed before we go for rezzes like that. Sure, it was a cute rez, don't be wrong, I liked it. But I feel as though definitely, I feel as though it was, it was a bad rez that could have definitely staggered your Jungle Queen, but also ends up staggering you. Because do you see how like how long your team are now having to wait for you to get back? But we'll keep going, obviously now to be about to peek with everything. Don't get damage boost Jungle Queen axe. you can... Ooh. We don't need Valk to res that. I, I I understand why, right? But lamps down. Because uh, cause what's going to happen is Baps even... Because Baps obviously missed the lamp because he's missed the timing on it because Jungle Queen ends up like getting mowed down. In fact, let, let me go back because I want to talk about this entire thing. Because I would rather you, first of all, damage the Jungle Queen instead of the Soldier. Whenever they've got the Ryan and stuff like that, right? Ryan's just going to stand there with his shield up. Is Soldier going to be able to do anything in the scenario, right? Ryan is walking forward with his shield up to to shield the soldier. Uh, sorry, shield the reaper, right? Who's going to walk in. Out of all of these guys, who is going to be the person that's going to be able to damage damage through that Ryan barrier? Junker Queen. Because Junker Queen can use her axe and just... Choom, like, she could just walk through the barrier. It's like, she could just walk past people, basically. Soldier, on the other hand, obviously has to wait for the Junker Queen to push forward or Ryan to put down his shield before he can get any, in any damage. And then, obviously, Sombra, she, Sombra can't unless she, like, TPs into the back line and stuff like that, okay? And, obviously, Bap's not going to be able to as well. So, at the moment, I need you to keep your beam on your Junker Queen. So, keep beam on Junker Queen. Keep beam on Junker Queen. Damage boost that axe swing. Keep her up. Okay. Lamp goes down. All you have to do now is, as soon as she goes down, just res. Because they, because obviously they've all backed off because of the um, the axe swing, right? And so they're gonna take a moment to be able to get around to you to come and do like for this res. But in a minute as well, you're being protected by the immortality field. Okay, so Junker Queen goes down. We go res straight away. As soon as the slap goes down, we go res, and then we can use our Sombra or use anybody basically to sling ourselves out of the room as soon as we've done it. Okay, I, we do not need to valk this. We can maybe valk after the res in order to increase the tempo from our team. You know, like because obviously we've, we've done this res, we're back at people, and they've you know they pushed into us. You can then use your valk to then re-push back into them. But I think definitely, I feel as though you pop the valk to res here, and you don't really need to. We should have definitely done it later on. All right. Nice to be doing again out though. I would have helped now. Nice damage from Junk Queen. Just really unfortunate that you had to get a hit with a slab. Still in Valk though, which is good. <laughs> don't don't still keep forcing that angle. Like it was alright you trying to force it the first time to try and get in. But then as soon as you realize you're not getting in at the angle, go down here. You remember you still got your Valk for a few seconds. You just honestly, you just need to do a really like good GA like through the store basically. Your Valk will probably end when you get to about here. And then you will have LOS of your, what's it called? You'll have LOS of your Junker Queen and also be able to help your Sombra out here, okay? It's fine you trying to go it for the first time. But remember, like Ryan's a big tanky person. He's just going to stand here and just not allow you through. If it was someone like a, um, someone like a Tracer or like any kind of like DPS, for example, you would have definitely been able to get through here. But remember, okay, if, if one option is blocked off, think to yourself, where can we next go? Down or through here. Okay, but we'll keep going. I see how your team end up doing. I feel as though we're going to lose it, though, which is unfortunate. I did like your damage boost onto the Junk Queen ult, though. That was a lot better uh, damage boost application, I will say. 
But I think it's just a tiny bit of our decision making right now, Hudson, is a little bit. A little bit not the best. But we'll keep going. Bomb flap. See, I'm trying to I'm trying to like remember the um the name of them all now. Because they do actually say the name of them, so at least I can like kinda remember. So nice time obviously, you know, hanging out with a soldier right now. I would okay so instead of us doing a bunny hop there this is one of the few times that you want to do a sling you will know right the the team comp that they're kind of rushing the the team comp that they're kind of playing now is kind of a rush comp kind of like not a not a main rush comp because obviously they don't have um lucio to speed them but they will be very team centered around this reinhardt shield and this reaper right they're going to play very up close so it's fine because obviously, you know, you're not going to be able to get picked off too much by playing over here. But it's still a really, really good habit, okay? I like this buddy hop, don't get me wrong. But this is one of the few times where we don't actually want to use the buddy hop. Because this buddy hop is not helping us get any better positioning. I would rather you took this opportunity to do a sling and sling ourselves, like, back here or something to play with the soldier or something. Because right now, you playing here is just basically in direct LOS of these guys. Nice damage boost onto Ryan. As soon as Ryan puts up that shield though, just keep damage boosting your soldier. Like, I would just be jiggling beans between these guys right now. Nice damage boost on the swing. Like that damage boost on the pin, on the just in case he, um, the Ryan is above the 200 HP that he does. Um, because obviously if you damage boost it, it's mostly that it goes up to 225. Nice damage boost on the riser. Nice. Look how you leave the healing as well for, um, what's it called, for the... The bat because it's almost got lamp. Really, really nice. Nice. I get on the point here. Very, very nice. The only reason why I'd say get on the point here is just because you want to cap it like as quick as possible. And then go straight into your soldier. Nice. So we didn't flick ourselves up, which is completely fine. Nice. I like what you're playing right now. Just while you're playing here, just make sure you're still flicking back to your team, okay? Yes, we do have this Baptiste who can help your Reinhardt, but at the same time, we do still obviously want to make sure that they're not currently being run over by these guys and stuff. So it's fine that you're staying with the soldier. Just make sure that we're still flicking back just to check, okay? Nice ping, obviously, onto the Reaper, and I love how we back off already for it. Nice. More of the thing is when you back off from this, try to back off a little bit further, maybe like towards the health package a little bit more. Just once again, create as much space as you can for that Reaper. It's good that you're backing off, don't get me wrong, but we just need to be able to distance a tiny, tiny bit quicker, basically. All right? But we'll keep, sorry, a tiny bit more, that's what I mean. Obviously, we do have to push up with Soldier a little bit more, so very, very nice. Play here while you're doing this, by the way. Just once again, for LOS reasons, just play back here. Nice. It's completely fine. Love how you're playing back here. Oh. I would not make this rotation. Because you know at this point your soldier's going to start running off because he hasn't managed to get a pick off and they're all going to be respawning, right? So he's going to back off this way anyways. As soldier's backing off, you could put your beam and you could do a quick wall bounce and get yourself basically back to your team, but this way. The reason is because can you see how close you are to these guys now doing this GA because you're in the middle of trying to like cross in front of them. You are so, so close to like the enemy team and also want to get in the LOS. So if you can, try just to make that, that safer rotation just around this side instead. So you see how, how much damage we end up taking there because we end up doing that like really bad rotation and also how we're not with our soldier again now. Nice, obviously damage just on the attempt of the pin. Nice. Love the damage boost on, on back. Nice. Okay, feels like we got a little bit lost here. Okay, remember that our bath is still quite healthy. And we could also use all these roofs and stuff like that if we need to. Okay, let's quickly go back. Because I want to watch this kind of like a third person view. So I can like help you. Because at the moment you're very, uh, you're not moving your camera enough in this kind of section part here and remembering that we do have other people that we might be able to peel to obviously your soldiers are very very aggressive right now but i guess he'll back off in a second so i think this is you trying to rotate back to him and then realize the soldier's going in so that's comp sorry the ryan's going in which is completely fine so we're rotating up and around which once again completely fine we're on the box which is fine nice oh so okay so soldiers are going to take it up by reaper all Yes, it's this GA I don't like from you, okay? Right now, who is the most... Well, okay. <laughs> Actually, you can very much see just out of these guys, okay? 
I would have preferred, instead of you doing a GA out to your Ryan here, I would rather you did a GA and then slid up onto this, like, roof or something. Maybe, like, slid down, like, the back side of it or something like that. Just to provide some extra cover. Because right now, your BAP is the one that's currently just... I don't know, be, being railed <laughs> by the enemy team, I guess. Whereas Ryan, Ryan is extremely healthy and we're trying to focus him, okay? I would rather you kind of help your BAP out here some more. And then you could obviously start damage to the Ryan when it gets in a little bit more. But I think we should have definitely, instead of flinging ourselves this way, okay? Trying to pick yourself, okay, where's the bomb? Okay, I can pop, I can flick myself up here and this will be fine. All right? I'll keep going with kind of like what you end up doing now though. Okay, we res, we res, that's fine. Nice, okay. I like, I like, I like the battle. So just go, I'm gonna go back in a sec anyway, so I'm just gonna quickly just watch all this bit. Nice for your position, by the way, obviously it's a contest. This part is such a good part to be able to contest, by the way. It's so, so good. Okay, your damage boost usage is a lot better there. Let me quickly go back because I want to talk about um, something in a second. So, I like the Valk. I know I said mm, at the beginning that I totally forgot that your soldier died. So, I kind of like get the Valk. It's good. So, we talked about this rotation. So, we Valk. Okay, so I like how you keep the Sombra up, then you go for the Red. This is fine. You help the Right. right. Instead of peeling back to the Rhine, because what ends up happening is you end up kind of like just going for this res and ba looking really stationary, okay? When you go for this res, I want you to look for the Sombra and also know that she hasn't used her EMP in a while, okay? And you guys will really want to start contesting this and you've also invested Valk, okay? This is going to give basically your Sombra the get-go to be able to, you know, to want to use her EMP and stuff like that. So after this res, instead of going to your Rhine, remember Rhine has a lot of HP, I would rather you res and then helps with the Sombra. I would rather you jeed in with a Sombra here. You helped her contest this. Because imagine if she was damage boosted there, she could have definitely got that Tracer or made a recall a little bit quicker. Ryan is very much self Like, you know, we can't go and help our Ryan just a, just a second, which I think is what you end up doing. Oh no, Ryan's fallen. Okay. Let's go back. I want to see this view of you. I feel as though this is all a bit of theme priority gone wrong, basically. And it all starts from here. So... Res is fine. Res is good. Like the res, right? I would rather you went for the Sombra there to help with the damage boost on the EMP. I would then turn to go and help the Ryan instead of you kind of like focusing on the point some more. I would damage boost a lot more here by your mind as well. Towards the end of your Valk, I'd rather you push the damage boost some more. Lovely positioning right now though. I really do like it. Nice. I love your position on the point though, can I just say? It's really, really great. Like, the fact that you, you just like stay there because you're not being challenged and stuff is really, really great, okay? I see so many Moses just like randomly flinging themselves about because just because they feel like they need to. But actually, it could be so much better sometimes if we just stay there. Stay so again, obviously with Sombra, she's out of, um, she's in like, sorry, her little invisible form. So definitely like, what's it called? Go to help your soldier right now instead. That's fine, you're going to go damage with the the Sombra there though, especially when she goes to your own, like a little cube thing. That's not your fault. You're trying to obviously help Sombra, which is completely fine. Nice rotation here. Obviously you realize the thingies there. I dropped my beam now because you know Sombra's gonna go invisible. Nice. Still gonna help you back. Very, very nice. I think that was like really well played from you there. It's not your fault that the, the Rhine dies. He just goes in extremely aggressively. That's fine with Sombra. Just let her do her own like little Sombra things, I guess. Nice. Oop. Nice one. A damage boost here. Right now, um, Bap is going to be able to keep your Ryan up and stuff. And unless if your Ryan is like extremely critical, leave him and just damage boost your soldier. Unless if this Ryan has his shield up and your and obviously either your Ryan has his shield up or he's going into swing. You don't really need to be touching your Ryan right now because that's Bap's job to keep him up. Your job right now is to damage boost this soldier to try and chunk down as much damage from this Ryan as possible. Okay. Which I feel as though is what you kind of realize. Love how you focus on the soldier with beam wise. Damage boost that pin him. Damage boost. We need to be, okay. Key things that we need to damage boost with Ryan. Damage boost is pins and damage boost is fire strikes. All it takes is just one split second just to cl flick on that damage boost and it could result in either a kill or not, okay? So definitely just be flicking on a damage boost a little bit more. I like this Valk, I will say. This is a good Valk in my opinion. Will this push on the damage boost though? 
I feel like in Valk, you know when to push the damage boost, but it's when we're not in Valk. Ooh, yeah, we should have definitely dragged out a little bit more. We did end up doing it in the end. It's just really unfortunate, right? I found this a lot of the on the Overwatch 2 maps. It's my one, like, don't go wrong, like, I love the Overwatch 2 maps. I love what they're doing with them and stuff like that. But it's stuff like, like, these really chunky, detailed doors. Same, it's like the same on Parisio. Like, there's so many, like, random bits of furniture and stuff. Like, come, like, the Overwatch 1 maps just seem, like, really, really smooth for some reason. And the Overwatch 2 maps are, like, really, really, like, janky for some reason. I like this res, but I think we should have definitely tried to just, honestly, all you have to do here, because you, you end up kind of, like, just stuck here during the res, you can just, you can still stay in the 1.5 meters and just go behind the wall here so we should have actually just dragged this completely around as you did so you didn't end up like going up a little bit here but it should definitely just been a little bit more of a smoother drag around than what we did do like it though it's a really really good res from you so we keep going so soldiers so soldiers gone night up uh Huge window. <laughs> we'll keep, keep going. Just stay damage boosting your bat here because right now um, your Ryan is going to be what's it called. Your Ryan will be looking for a fire strike through this window. The fire strike through this window, obviously, window amplifies by 100. So this will make the fire strike 200, which will one shot a squishy. So just you do not need to damage boost this because it's not going to pick off the Ryan because Ryan has so much HP. But it could possibly pick off squishy by not doing this. So I would honestly just stay with the bat here and just be damage boosting him who's going to be like, dam like looking over the wall basically. Remember as well, Ryan is a very short range hero as our bat is currently DPS and trying to spam people out. We spent a lot of time here just damage boosting our Ryan where we don't need to. You see how we just, we're still here damage boosting our bat right now? This is what I want you to do more. I want you to just stand, stand like away and just be able like, to just damage boost your bat but get spam damage in like this, okay? So we end up rotating with Ryan. Oh, nice cancel. Ooh. Okay. I'm not gonna lie to you, I do not like your rotation here. You know, to go with the Rhine. Right? So, Rhine right now, Rhine has shatter. So, Rhine is gonna look for a flank shatter right now. You going with him is obviously gonna provide A, an extra piece of footsteps, and also B, a beam that's gonna be really, really bright, okay? You making this rotation with your beam is going to do nothing to go and help your Ryan right now, okay? Come, bring in mind as well, you have soldiers going to respawn, you have Sombra's going to respawn, we nearly have EMP, and our soldier is obviously, you know, a main blue beam target. I would rather you stayed here and just stayed damage boosting your, your bat, so let, I'll play where I want you to play. Oh, okay, the soldier's back. Okay, my, my, my bat's pushed up. You see how now we can, what's it called? We can still help our Ryan when he actually makes the what's called the advancement in. Because right now he what's it called? You've made this entire rotation and missed out on so so much damage boost that we could have done maybe to work down, you know, their Ryan shield so we can get a free shatter. Or like we could have definitely maybe, I don't know, possibly got a pick up and stuff like that. Us doing this rotation has just provided zero effect to this okay allow ryan to do his tiny like little mini flying let him do his thing remember to ourselves who is our main blue beam target right now and it's obviously our going to be our um our soldier and we could also damage the bath okay i would rather you said you basically stayed and just damage with these guys okay but we'll keep going and then it's this it's this point okay so I would rather once again we don't need we don't need to be with Ryan here again. It's like I feel as though for this entire team fight we've spent our entire even like before this and everything we're spending too much time healing our Ryan. Okay, remember that Bap can heal Ryan. Bap is very competent of healing this Ryan heart. And unless if this Ryan is really weak, we should only be just be touching it just to top him off and then going straight back to blue beam with our soldier. I feel as though this is where we're struggling right now, Hudson. I feel as though we're spending way too much time worrying that people are gonna fall over when in reality, remember we're in GM we can very easily trust our second support like this bap is very competent in to be able you know being able to keep up this reinhardt remember he he has a lamp as well it was already used as lamp but like he also has <laughs> in general he already has his lamp and stuff right so he you know you still have this opportunity available i've just that's where the lamp is <laughs> you know he still has all of these 
opportunities and stuff like that, you know, to be able to keep you up, he still has regen. The only reason why you need to go in here is if he starts getting really, really critical. He also has a gigantic shield. Look, he could, could just wave about like this, okay? I would rather you spent basically this entire past, like, 30 seconds damage boosting. We'll keep going. And then obviously we... The, the, what's called, the reaper doesn't not coming in because once again, we're too pushed up here, like, to try to help the Rhine. Like, we should definitely, once again, been more further back, allow the reaper to happen, then we could, like, G ourselves in to be able to help the, the Sombra or something. But it's, once again, it's because we're so tunnel vision trying to help this Rhine right now that we're, what's it called? That we end up in this, like, really bad position. A very questionable EMP from your Sombra. I'm hoping that's gonna be a switch. <laughs> but anyways, we'll keep on going now. Obviously, one of the last, um, last points. See, I'm still trying to remember which all these ones are, by the way. Oh, it is, I think Junko is the one with, like, the high ground at the back of the point, and a you call like, fall off the map. We've got a Kiriko now, and we also have a Doom and a Cast, so I would definitely be switching my main Blue Beam to obviously Cast. Doom is still really, really good to be able to damage boost in all, like, his punches and stuff. Kiri has the Zuzu as well, and also does, like, a lot of healing. I would definitely just be following Cast a little bit more here. Once again, while you're with this cast, just be sure that you're checking on this team. With Kiriko, Kiriko does a tiny bit less healing than obviously our what's called our BAP. So we just um, we just want to kind of like just be making sure that our, our Doom is still okay at this point. Just be kind of like checking around this high a bit more. I like where your position right now though, it's really, really great. Nice how we're checking now though, which is good. Nice how we're going to go and help Doom, but I would have definitely made that more of a directional GA back to wherever your cast is. Like your cast has moved now, which is Annoyed. Okay, so <laughs> your cast has moved to rotate. As as you're doing this, I would definitely just kind of like flick back, just see where your doom is. All all you have to do right now is honestly just do a cancel GA. If so, you have two options, right? You go in and because obviously you need to go in to go and help the stream. That's completely fine. That's kind of like what you have to do right now, okay? But as you're doing this, be sure that we're looking back after we've got a beam on him. Go and look back and see where our cast is. If our cast is still playing up top and we can GA back to him, then that's going to be our option. If not, just cancel your GA. All you have to do is cancel your GA. Then all you've got is like a second to wait. And then you can rotate obviously like one of these high grounds and stuff like that, okay? Because once again, we're being too tunnel visioned onto our, what's it called? Onto our Doom. And our Doom is still like pretty healthy. Like we could definitely kind of like just go in quickly top him up a tiny bit and then go back to our cast or something, okay? Nice, just basically we're flicking all the damage. Ooh. Once again, too tunnel vision onto our Doom. Let's quickly go back. Like remember, we have Kiriko to be able to help out, and like I would rather, especially with when you're playing Doom, Doom with, with playing with Doom, it's very much kind of like how you play with uh, with a ball. Okay, you actually see the tracer. Okay, so you have to think to yourself at this very moment in time. Okay, how are we going to evade this tracer? So I really like what you first do, which is you end up jumping down this backside. Okay. But then you end up geeing into her, okay? Remember this Doomfist? Okay, when Doomfist uses, uses his abilities, he gets shields back up. So he's like completely fine. Plus, as well, you have um, you have Kiriko that's like nearby. No, she's not. She's dead. Never mind. Um, but it's just, like, you know, your Doom is going to be like perfectly fine here. Like, the only person he's being pressured by is this Kiriko. And he's obviously just got like charge punch and stuff like that. He is completely fine. I would rather, you know, when you've dropped to this like section here and you see this, um, because you know where the trace is going to be, the trace is going to try and blink to get to you next. All you have to do is just rotate around and just spend uh, like a second or two. Just do a little GA buddy hop around this corner. Allow yourself to play with this cast for a second. And then you can always GA yourself back in to go and help these guys if necessary. Because right now I feel as though you end up kind of being really, really tunnel visioned into helping the Doom. Which is the reason why we end up kind of, you know, realizing, oh wait, the Tracer. And then bam, we end up dying, okay? Remember who our being blue bean target is and who's going to get the most out of our damage boost. Yes, obviously Doom, you know does kind of like need some help but look at his health bar before you go in think to yourself does this doom actually like desperately need my help but we'll keep going go back to your cast very very nice that's because the damage boost there as well for his slam you see how you're doing right now where you're like kind of like looking at him and then you drop in to go and help on the just in case Nice. I would have made that more of a directional GA to go to him. Just once again for the cooldown. Nice. All the heals here. Flick that damage boost. Get him, get him. Nice. 
Nice damage from Kiri as well there. Really, really nice. See, your Valks are good. Like, it's so random, Hudson, because it's like... I really agree with your Valks. I really agree who you're going to go and help with the Valks. Apart from the one on the, the bomb flats, whatever it's called, right? The rest of your Valks have been really, really good. I really love who, like, you're focusing your damage boost on. I love all this kind of say. This has been really, really great as well while I've been talking. I'm just going to pause it here just for a sec. I love your Valks. Your Valks are so, so good. And you know who you need to damage boost in Valk. It's outside of Valk. And it's, like, started these team fights or, like, in the middle of team fights and stuff where we don't have a Valk. I feel as though you get a little bit lost because you don't know who you should be okay try what i what i like to do is i like to have what i call an anchor point right what i mean by that is i have somebody in in the team comp who is my main blue bean target or someone that i know is always going to be like a certain spot and just default back to them on the just in case things go south right in this team comp, right, this is going to be your cast because your cast is the most stationary person out of this team you know is always going to like constantly like be around different places and stuff like that so I would def I would definitely say that, you know, cast like if we ever like this is fine, you're going up to follow up on this like doom damage and stuff like that and focusing these guys. I really, really like this. And I hope that you go over to go and help the cast in a second. But it's like what's it called? I feel as though in team fights and stuff, we get very very tunnel vision on just, you know, helping our tank. And it seems like that we're very relying on our positioning around our tank, which is the reason why we end up being picked off quite a few times we're always defaulting to go and help our tank when in reality especially when you have someone like a kiriko like a bat that is not a, that isn't our job our job is to enable our dps and damage boost them and i would rather you were with your cast right now and damage boost but we keep going obviously i would rotate more to be with your cast nice make that bunny hop just around the side nice to be here though on up top nice heals i'd back off a little bit sooner here though Nice damage to that punch. Nice. Let's get damage to the Doom here. That is a completely fine time for you to go and help Doom, by the way. Is if, what's it called? If he goes in for like, these like punches and goes like, really aggressively to begin with. That is a completely fine for you to start off. And then I would definitely look to go back to someone. But this is a really, really good start. Damage boost and like this, okay? Look for your Doom now. I would not be looking to res. Ooh, nice. Okay, I do like that. It's just be fair. The only reason why I was saying not to look for that raise is because you had to be like really with tunnel visioned onto it. And also because your Kiriko went down. So obviously, talk, talk about you going to damage boost in. Right, it's, it's this bit here, okay? You know that you can go for this res, and I like it, but you're very tunnel visioned onto it, okay? Try if you can. Obviously, realize that you might be able to do this res, and then look around, okay? Think to yourself, okay, is there anyone that desperately needs my help right now, or, like, what's it called? Do I, do I need, like, to go and GA to someone? Because, remember, we don't want to allow someone else to die while they're doing this. Now, I feel as though your Kiri ends up dying in this Kiri 1v1, which I feel as though is not her fault, because she just decides to take this 1v1. That's not on you, Okay. I like the res as well where you end up doing it. But do you see how much time we end up spending just looking at the res? We spend about five or six seconds looking at the res and we do not pay any attention to our cast like for one little bit during that entire thing. By the way, as well, when you've done this res, because you're up on this high ground and you know the Kiri's just lost the Kiri 1v1, try if you can just block LOS over and stay up here before you go for this GA. Because obviously you do the super short res, puts your GA in a cooldown and you don't spend like a second kind of wandering about. That is enough time for Kiri to be able to hit a headshot on you. So I like this res. Love the little super jump. This is one of the few times I agree with super jump reses. If people watch like previous vods, I see a lot of people just doing them out in the open. And that's not the reason why you should be doing these super jump reses. So I love how you use it to get up into this high ground. This is perfect. Just all you want to do is after you've done the res, cut LOS for like a second while you wait for your GA to refresh and then you can GA. But I think definitely as we're doing this res, just or like before the res, make sure that our cast is okay and make sure that other people are okay before we go for that res. I do like it though. It's a really, really good res. Nice. Nice heals obviously on Kiri. Nice damage with one to the right. I hate that Sombra glitch as well. Nice damage you can get onto the Sombra there as well. It feels like this time you, you know kind of like when... Ooh, I don't like that rotation. That's the reason why I don't like that rotation. Let's quickly go back. Um, It feels like like as you've got more into the VOD, it's, apart from that one really, really bad point, you seem to be a lot more like settled in now and like... You know, he like you need to be damage boosting. Like it's so good how much you're following up on these hacks. Right, it's this bit. This rotation. I do not like this rotation one little bit, okay? 
I would rather you just walk behind and like if you start your beam on them, like do AG around or something like that. Or definitely, I feel as though we should definitely instead of like because you end up kind of like just flicking yourselves up and then kind of like just hanging about up here again, right? You know that this team is going to be rushing in to you guys because look at look at the percentage, right? They these guys are absolutely desperate to be able to touch this right now, so they're just going to rush in. They're just going to rush into your team. A few people obviously go go mains, go straight to the point. A few people could have rushed in, especially because you know um, Reaper's got ult because he hasn't used it in a while. Okay. I don't like this rotation straight across, but I think if you want to make this rotation, you have to make it straight to this high ground. Because then this gives you natural cover. If if Reaper ends up coming to you, then you just drop main. If Reaper goes to cast, then obviously you could just stay up here and just attempt your best to be able to go and help him. But if not, then obviously you help your doom. What ends up happening is it feels like you are too you are too slow here. And you end up kind of like just vibing up above them like here when they're going to be pushing into you right i feel as though we should definitely been a little bit more reactive here and realize that the, the, you know they are they're going to be wanting to this point like quick right now so we should have definitely like backed off to over here because if right if we if we g ourselves and then flick ourselves here obviously we could try and help the cast but it's probably not going to happen definitely and we'll keep going i feel as though they're going to get the cap here so it's going to be a really really intense Overfight us in a second. Unless if Doom just manages to kill everyone with a carry. I don't know. I, I think it, it was definitely once again another movement thing. Don't put your beam on to Sombra here, by the way. You can just J to Sombra without your beam on. Nice. I love how you realize now. But yeah, we don't need our beam on her. Same thing again with beam. We're giving her away. Nice. Okay, we should definitely peel for cast here instead. Once again, we're too busy defaulting to our Kiriko and our Soul and in our and our Doomfist team instead of going to go and help the cast. Let's quickly back it off, and I'll play where I would play. This is fine as were you asking for the Sombra. Okay, so this is fine. This you going to go and help your Doom here is completely fine because obviously it's critical. So you can't get a chance to damage boost. Fine, obviously help us on. Right, it's this bit. Okay, you make this rotation here. I, I thought you were going to make this rotation to go and help the cast. What you end up doing is you end up making this rotation just to help your Doom, okay? Look how much help your look look how much HP your Doom has right now. Doom has 396. He is completely fine. He is like he is not worrying about a thing, okay? So I would rather I like how you did this rotation up into the box, but as we're doing it, okay, we need to be still looking at the, at the enemy team. Think, okay, who's still alive? This reap is gonna go onto my cast. All you have to do here is just flick your beam onto your cast and help him out. Instead, he just gets walked onto by the, by what's it called, by the Reaper, while your Doom is reloaded and your Kiri is just stood here, like, obviously spamming out at the other side and stuff like that, okay? We needed to look around once again and try and peel for our cast a little bit more here. Nice, but I feel as though you do end up winning it, which is all good. Over Hudson, I think it's still a really, really good strong game, I will say, okay? I feel as though you shouldn't definitely not feel that you're playing too stationary, because actually, I feel as though you're playing Mercy as you were in your last VOD, just not randomly jumping about, which is great. I really like it, okay? I feel as though, like, you're... Okay, let's let's start with the positives, okay? I liked your reses, apart from the one on the Junker Queen that staggered her. Uh, well, well, staggered you. Um, they were all good. Reses, reses were really, really great. Your Valks, can I just say, are really good, okay? Your beam priority is really, really good with Valks. And I love why and when you're using them. I feel as though that is something that you should really, like, really, really be proud of, okay? You know who you should be able to damage boost in Valk. You know when to heal in Valk. It's really, really great, okay? My only thing, right, is I want you to now take that um, knowledge of, like, when to damage boost and when to heal in your Valk. And apply it to your normal gameplay. Because there's been so many times where we've just either forgotten to flick onto the damage boost on like certain little things. Or we for example with the, the flank with the do with the the rhyme, which I'll come on to another point as well in a second. There's been a lot of times where we're not utilizing the blue beam to its maximum, which I feel as though is why you're missing out, okay? I want you to be really, really kind of like cautious and think to yourself, whenever someone peeks something or whenever you know someone's gonna like, you want to use an ability or want to be aggressive, that's when you need to damage boost, okay? So I think first thing Hudson is I think what could really, really help you right now is I think maybe, uh, you're probably not gonna like this, but go and watch other like high ranked dps play like for example if you're watching your code and you know that for example say say you have like a really really good soldier on your team right i would rather instead of you going back and reviewing your own, own gameplay which is good don't get me wrong i want you to also look at the soldier 
right? And look and see when's he being aggressive, when's he rotating, when's he doing this, right? And if it obviously, if he was like your main blue bean target, I want you to look and figure, okay, when should have I been helping him? When is it okay for me to back off and go and help other people and stuff like that? I feel so that's the one thing you're missing out on right now is you're missing these tiny bits of damage boost and you're also missing out on who we should be with, okay? So that's my first piece of advice to you is I think definitely look at how the DPS are going to play and then look to see how we can enable them the most by doing that. Um, the second thing is there's certain parts of positioning which I don't like because uh, it's only like minor bits. Like it's very, it's every once in a while we just make like a really weird rotation or we just like, like stand like a weird spot, okay? Try if we can to like really think and limit ourselves to certain areas of the map and stuff like that and think where it's going to be the safest place because there's been like a few times where we what's it called where we, we rotate and then it's like a, it's just really really weird basically um and then my final thing is it kind of comes back down to the first point that i made with making someone else your main blue beam target okay i want you to really think to yourself as you start off a team think to yourself who is going to be what i would call either your main blue beam target or your anchor point because obviously sometimes your main blue beam target like would be like a really good anchor for you and stuff um Basically, an anchor point is someone that, that I would like to call like someone that's like really, really stationary. Um, so, for example, in this, obviously, in your team club, it did end up being your main blue target, which, which is your cast. But let's say you're playing Echo Bastion, okay? And obviously, you know, you know you, that your main blue target is going to be Echo, so you want to be kind of like going in and trying to enable her as much as possible. But let's say that she flies in really aggressively, or we end up losing LOS of her, and we can't find her, okay? And we start panicking. We think to ourselves, who is going to be our anchor target? Well, Bastion. Bastion is an extremely stationary character and he's going to hold like certain angles. He's going to play in certain areas. So you could just default back to him for a second if we need to and we can still carry on damage boosting him, okay? Because I feel as though there's been a lot of times where we default to our tank being that anchor point, which a lot of the time, I think for the majority of tanks, we don't want them to be our anchor target. We want it to, to be someone else, okay? Unless if you're playing Mercy with like genji sombra for example which very mad i would not recommend playing mercy there like you know there's very few times that you have a not one stationary dps okay so i think definitely work on that because a will help you with your beams because it'll, it'll like allow you to kind of default to one person and know kind of like who you should be with but also it will definitely help with you like and your positioning and stuff because i <laughs> i still give a going back to the flank with with ryan and stuff like that but it avoids scenarios like that for example uh, but hold on, hold on, once again, like, honestly, a really, really good VOD, though, like, I know I've harped on about, like, a lot of negatives and stuff, but it's just purely because you were such high level now that I, you need to, you need to basically, basically like, told the truth of, like, this is what you're doing wrong, like, <laughs> I know it's, like, what's it called, I know it's, like, not as nice, I do always, you know, try to, like, you know, say the stuff that you're doing really, really well, like, that res on the Sombra was really, really nice, okay, uh, but, you know, I feel so it's definitely just best just to tell you straight that this is what you need help with, um, but yeah, I hope that was alright, Hudson. Once again, thank you so much to everyone on YouTube as well as on Twitch that have been watching this. You guys can get your own VOD views, leaving 5,000 channel points. I do them all with Twitch on Mondays, but also stream on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays too. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all later. Bye!